We lean on him for the wisdom and understanding we desperately need. I found myself heeding the advice of Billy Graham, a very close friend. I talked to him this week. He is the essence of humility. He still doesn't understand why anyone ever came to hear him speak. <laughs> He's precious beyond words. I could hardly think about the conversations with him and not weep. Billy Graham, in the late 70s, called a group of us to prayer for our nation. Bill Bright, and I responded to his request and put a small circle. You'd know some of the men's names, Pat, Ro uh, Pat Robertson, Adrian Rogers, Charles Stanley. And Billy Graham said, God has revealed to me unless we have a turn in principle and direction and leadership, we've got a thousand days of freedom, three years. I've just left Moscow, the Soviet threat, the enemy, out of control, soon to crush the free world. We have to have a miracle. A visitation from God, we've got to return to the principles our founders understood and we've got to have new leadership. Billy Graham and I were both Southern Baptist evangelists. At the time, I was Southern Baptist leading evangelical voice. Billy was, of course, the most famous preacher who's ever lived and the most, in so many ways, effective. Charles Stanley, after listening to Billy, slammed his fist down on the table. He said, Billy, I'll die to help turn this country back to God and our foundation. He preached a great message on principle over preference. Our nation is a constitutional republic. I went to work. They sent me to meet with Governor Reagan. We've got a Southern Baptist Sunday school teacher in the White House. So the Southern Baptist evangelist goes to visit with the Hollywood actor. And as we began to talk and share, and he began to talk about Washington, he began to talk about principles. He began to talk about what his life was committed to. And I shared with him what had happened in that prayer meeting. And he knew then, because he was still wavering with whether or not to run, he had to run. I asked him to join, as Ralph Reed referenced a moment ago, with the total opposition of the Republican Guard and his own advisors. He joined with me to plan the National Affairs Briefing, which we worked on together for about six or seven months. 17,000 people met in the reunion arena. The media reported they impacted 50 million voters. Before we went out, I was sitting with John Conley. I had just introduced a program that General Daniel Graham pleaded with me to share because he had written a book, A Thousand Days of Freedom, not knowing what Billy Graham had said. Daniel Graham, who had worked with Reagan, but he said, I really can't get his attention. I want to show him what we can do militarily. I want to show him laser. Sitting with John Conley, Daniel Graham across the room, I opened the scriptures to the Psalms, the shields of the earth of the Lord's. I said, Mr. Reagan, we've got a fierce enemy committed to the destruction of freedom in the world to crush our country. We need the shields of God. I said, do you know what laser is? He said, not exactly. I said, it's amplified light. Do you know what the light of the world is? He said, Jesus. I said, sir, we need to amplify the light on every front and in our lives. But I said, I want you to listen to this general. And he sat down and he showed him laser. Daniel Graham showed him what could happen and led to what the media poo-pooed as Star Wars. The laser defense system, the strategic defense system, system was born over the scriptures. Daniel Graham never left Mr. Reagan's side. For eight years, he was head of the Strategic Defense Initiative, which contributed to the downfall of the Soviet Union. I am simply telling you that historic fact to make this point very clearly. 